वेलकम टू सी सी गुरु को लाइव लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट माई फ्रेंड्स वन सेकेंड आई एम विद यू टू कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन टू अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट दैट इज कैपिटल बजटिंग कंसेप्ट एंड टेक्निक्स बेसिकली वेन वी टॉक अबाउट कैपिटल बजटिंग और कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर डिसीजन इट इट इज ब्रॉडली कवर्ड अंडर द डिसीजन ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट I told you about uh, different decisions taken by fund manager. So one was, uh, you know, basically the uh, you know investment decision into all important decision like uh, you know uh, after dividend decision we are talking about the investment decision. So we have to understand that once the capital is acquired, once the financing decision is done, uh, a fund manager has to focus on to the capital expenditure decision. That is where to invest, which property to buy. and uh, uh, friends it is very important for a fund manager to uh, focus on to this decision cause it is very crucial and it is uh, very much important for a fund manager uh, you know cause whatever profit will be generating whatever uh, benefits the company will exhibit it will actually emanate from this particular decision so whatever decision we have taken in terms of capital expenditure decision that is going to have a long uh, run impact or long term impact so we have to be very cautious we have to be, be very vigilant while taking this particular decision before i talk about uh, the agenda of today's lecture let me uh, give you a very uh, you know small example or let me ask you a question suppose if you have to buy a pen and you have to buy a property and i ask you a question will you devote the same kind of time or will you uh, you know make the similar kind of effort into both the buying decisions obviously the answer is no because when i have to buy a pen you would say obviously that sir it is not that important decision because the involvement of money is very less it is not going to affect me for long run so if by, somehow my decision is wrong i can uh, you know uh, give away with that particular decision i can discard that particular decision but what if i have bought a property and that is wrong i have invested into uh, a property and that is not good for me that is not giving me proper uh, benefits or profit so so that decision you know actually involves uh, involves our uh, you know greater involvement of our time and effort so we have to understand that uh, you know uh, when we are going for revenue decision revenue expenses we need not to bother about, bother much but when we are taking a decision for capital expenditure as we understand what is capital expenditure the one which is related to acquisition of a property or or an asset so obviously that decision is going to be very important for us so in this particular chapter of chapter of capital budgeting concepts and techniques uh, uh, you know will be uh, classifying this lecture into uh, you know uh, different parts so in the first very part i'll be telling you about the different concepts behind this capital budgeting decision into financial management and in today's lecture i'll tell you first basics of capital expenditure decision what are the basics or the fundamental principles which we are supposed to follow while taking this decision of capital expenditure i'll tell you about the importance of capital budgeting decision i'll also uh, you know uh, uh, explain you the process of capital budgeting decision what are the different steps involved into this particular decision then uh, the way we classify this capital budgeting decision on different basis what are the different basis for classifying this particular decision that we'll discuss we'll also talk about the basic principles in cost benefit estimation which we are supposed to follow as a fund manager and there is a debate on accounting profit versus cash flow approach into financial management i'll tell you about the drawbacks or the limitations of accounting profit uh, and that is why we are not basing our decision on onto this particular accounting profit rather we go ahead and we calculate we go for uh, you know uh, estimating the benefits and cost via cash flow approach and then i'll be uh, telling you about the relevant versus irrelevant cash flows and after understanding all these uh, you know basic fundamental basics of uh, or fundamentals of uh, capital budgeting decision will move on to the techniques of capital budgeting so let me first tell you what is capital budgeting decision you know the term capital budgeting sounds like you have to go for preparing a budget but basically it's a capital expenditure decision we have to make a decision for our capital investment my dear students remember taking financial decision is very very crucial for for even uh, our household matters suppose if i have to take a financial decision for my family uh, matters then too i have to be very vigilant but it my my responsibility doubles the moment i have to take care of somebody else's finances suppose i am appointed by my company as a fund manager and i have to make a financial decision for uh, their purchase of a property so obviously my responsibility is is double 
and remember i cannot say suppose in my uh, household matters i am giving a decision i have to buy a car and i am saying that uh, that uh, a particular company is good a particular brand is good and within that a particular model is good and i need not to give any justification to my family members suppose if i am going to make a decision and i am a decision maker or taker but when i'm taking decision or making decision for my company on behalf of my employer i have to give a justification that too it should be quantified so in this particular chapter of whatever decision we are making or taking we have to remember that it should be supported or backed by quantified logical answer which is known as qla so i have to give a logical answer that too quantified i cannot say that i feel like it is good and remember once i am getting a reason for selecting a particular project i need to give a decision for i need to give a valid reason for rejecting other available options suppose i am saying option a is better and b and b and c are not good then obviously i'll have to give a justification why b and c are not good so in this particular chapter in this particular topic of capital budgeting or capital expenditure decision we have to analyze all the proposals available and we have to give a quantified logical answer in support of our decision in this background i'm telling you what is capital budgeting decision capital budgeting decisions are basically related to the allocation of funds to different long term assets now here is a question what is which asset is uh, 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 known as long term asset which asset is known as short term asset in terms of accounting normally any asset which is going to be used for more than one financial year obviously that is regarded as long term asset or we are all already aware about the capital expenditure uh, you know parameters that any if any expenses re- is resulting into acquisition of any asset or property or if it is going to increase the efficiency of my my uh, operations then obviously it is going to be my capital expenditure apart from this we have another parameter called whether it is recurring or non recurring if it is of non recurring in nature obviously it is a capital expenditure so on those parameters which we have already used into financial accounting in in making a decision in deciding whether a particular expenditure is a capital expenses or a revenue expenses so here we have to focus on to the capital expenditure only the capital budgeting only so any asset which is going to be used for long term for that we have to take a decision so capital budgeting decisions are related to the allocation of funds to different long term assets it involves the entire process there is a you know list of process there are there is a uh, you know a long process of decision making with reference to acquisition of long term assets whose returns are expected to be received over a period of time remember my dear students i am going to buy a property today so cash outflow is uh, cash is going out today outflow is uh, is happening today but the benefit or the cash inflow i'll be receiving across uh, you know the life of the project suppose if i'm buying a plant which is having a life of 10 year so benefit i'm going to receive in future so we we may have a stream of cash inflow in years to come but the profit but the cash outflow is actually happening today so we have to understand that it involves it starts from the idea generation that which asset to buy i have recognized the need of buying a particular asset and i have understood that i have to buy this particular asset after understanding that i have to analyze that what are the different available options and then i need to you know analyze all those options on the basis of their cost and benefit and then ultimately or eventually we can come with a decision on the basis of quantified logical answer that yes plant a is better or plant b is better or plant c is better into this particular capital budgeting decision it may also be related to purchase of land or building or any plant or at times we have to make a decision for launching a new product or we have to go for extending our product line it can also be related to line extension of my product so remember normally we feel that when i'm going when i'm going to purchase a piece of land or building or plant that only involves the capital expenditure decision but remember if you are dealing with with products and you are going to launch a new product you have to understand whether this product will be successful for me will be profitable for me or not so i'll be conducting all all viability and feasibility study for that particular product so my dear students even the launch of new product or extension of your product line is also known as is also covered into this capital expenditure decision it may also be related to existing plant 
for example suppose if you are already having a plant and you wish to you know go for modernizing your plant you wish to update your plant or you feel that your plant is now redundant and you have to go for replacing it with a new one so there can be a replacement decision also so it can also be uh, in terms of replacement of existing plant or machine with more efficient one obviously when i'm going for making a replacement decision i always keep it in mind that it is going to increase my efficiency or it is going to upgrade my performance uh, you know that is why i'm going to make this particular decision so into this capital budgeting decision what is covered this is what i am willing to explain to you that it is not only covered it is not only covering the purchase of land building or plant only it may be in terms of line extension it may be in terms of launch of new product it may be a replacement decision so roughly uh, you know uh, the question comes when 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 these decisions are taken these de decisions may be taken into uh, two different types of firm one when your firm is new suppose i'm going to start my business i'm a new firm in the market so i can uh, you know uh, i'm supposed to you know uh, ex spend certain amount on to my establishment say i'm going to establish my business i need to buy a piece of land i may have to create a uh, erect a building over there i may have to purchase a plant over there for running my business so depending on the type of business uh, which uh, in which i am going to perform i'll have to take all capital exp expenditure decision and suppose if i'm already into the business my business is already established or i'm into existing business into existing ex existing firms also we may have to take a decision for diversification it may be a decision for expansion or it may be a replacement decision which we are going to take so capital expenditure decision can be taken for a new firm as well as existing firm so for these two types of firm you may have to take a decision either you are going to start a new business or you are already into the business your business is running and you may have to diversify or you may have to go for expanding your uh, your uh, your uh, units or you may have to go for replacement decision in case you feel like you feel that your uh, plant is now redundant and it is no more uh, you know uh, into practice it is no more feasible and viable for me that's why i'm willing to take a decision for replacement so in this capital budgeting decision what is covered this is what i try to explain it to you roughly we have to make a decision for capital expenditure the question comes that why this particular decision of fund manager is so important it is regarded as one of the most important decision taken by a fund manager the question comes to our mind why it is so important why it is very much important uh, you know for a fund manager and and at times it is said it is more important than even you know your financing decision cause in financing whatever money you are collecting whatever efforts you have made into that whatever uh, you know techniques you have applied for reducing your cost of capital that will that will stand nowhere in case your investment is not proper in case your capital expenditure decision is not proper so that is why it is very much important for a fund manager what are the possible reasons for reasons which make this particular decision of fund manager so important the first one the first very reason which comes to our mind is long term effect of this particular decision suppose in your personal life also you have to buy a car and you decided to buy this car without any you know previous exercise you went to a showroom you bought a car and the moment you came on the ro on road and you the moment you started you know driving it you felt that this decision is not right and i need to change you know what will happen the moment you will go back to the dealer the dealer would say sir it is not first hand car we cannot take it back it is now a second hand car you need to go to the dealers who are dealing with a second hand car and mind dear my dear students if you wish to understand the logic of depreciation in terms of your you know car you can find it into your insurance slip the moment you are buying your car in the first very premium there is a 5% depreciation so the moment you are buying your particular car and you are coming on road it is it is depreciated so that is why we are saying take a test drive go for you know exercising go for analyzing all the options available decide your after deciding your budget you have to exercise you have to take all the efforts you have to make all the efforts to make your decision full proof and ultimate and perfect and that is why you are not in a haste that is why you are making serious efforts in order to ensure that my decision should be perfect and in future i should not have any remorse on to my this particular decision the reason is long term effect but what if i have to buy a pen 
obviously i'll buy a 10 rupees pen and i'll be happy i'll not uh, you know exercise that much of effort and i'll buy it and suppose if i'm not satisfied i'll just uh, you know uh, uh, throw it out cause it is not going to affect me for long term the pen is going to be used used for uh, for a week or to the max for a month but what about what about a property suppose if you are going to buy a property it is going to have long term impact on to your performance and on to your profitability so this was an example of your personal decision imagine the magnitude of magnitude of uh, you know the reaction of your employer when you are taking a decision which is wrong which is causing lot of loss to your employer so obviously your employer will not take it positively and that would be that may also result into uh, you know your, uh, your your that may also cost your job so we have to understand that this decision is going to have a long term impact cause the asset which you are buying is going to be used for more than one financial year more than one operating cycle that is why it is it becomes very important for a fund manager the second important decision is the size of investment obviously the huge investment or substantial commitments the size of investment actually matters a lot since into all capital expenditure decision decisions the size of investment is very substantial it is very significant that is why you have to think twice before formulating before giving a recommendation that this asset need to be purchased so this is the second reason which is making this particular decision of fund manager so crucial and so important cause the size of investment is very huge or very substantial or you can say it is very significant when we go ahead another important reason which makes this particular decision very crucial is irreversible decision you can't reverse it as i gave you that example if you are if you are not happy with your decision you want to reverse it you you can't reverse some some students of mine they come to me and say sir why can't we reverse we can sell it out yes my dear student you can sell it out but there is a cost to it there is a cost of reversal to that particular decision and in case of companies who is going to bear that particular cost of reversal when the shareholders are investing their hard earned money into your company what reply are you going to give in front of your shareholders that this is a decision which we have taken is wrong and it is costing say uh, 20 crore rupees of loss to the company obviously they will not be, be taking it happily so this irreversibility of your particular decision is actually another important reason which makes this particular decision of capital expenditure very crucial and very important another reason is after long term effect huge investment and irreversibility it is going to affect your capacity and strength to compete remember in today's era you have to compete your competitors are actually uh, you know very vigilant everybody is on a move to cut the cost and in this era of competition if your capital budgeting decision is wrong it is going to affect your capacity it is going to affect your performance it is going to affect your cost and obviously if all these things are affected it is going to affect your strength to compete with your competitors in this era where the competition is cut throat so we have to mind here that this is another reason which is making our this capital expenditure expenditure decision more crucial and more important so uh, cause of these uh, reasons this particular decision you know uh, increases the responsibility of a fund manager due to these uh, reasons which i have discussed the long term impact huge investment irreversibility and an impact on capacity and strength to compete which makes our responsibility double or triple you can say so it is actually uh, you know uh, increasing the magnitude of uh, you know effort which you are it is going to increase the magnitude of uh you know expectation from by the employer or from the employer of yours so as a fund manager you have to be very alert you have to be very vigilant while making or taking this particular decision while recommending that this proposal x need to be purchased or is recommended you need to give a quantified logical answer the reason is which i have explained the reasons are explained to you that why it is so important for a fund manager now the next step into this particular discussion of capital expenditure uh decision or capital budgeting decision is the process of capital budgeting so there is a process which i hinted uh, uh, to you at the very outset that there is a process which is to be uh, you know adopted by the fund manager in taking this particular decision so what is the process of capital budgeting the process starts with the you know after identifying the need and uh, understanding that uh, the company needs or we actually need this particular product 
and understanding and identifying the options which are available. The first step is estimation of cost and benefits of a proposal. Remember my dear students, while going for analyzing the viability and feasibility of a proposal, we have to take care of the cost and benefits of a particular proposal. So, we have to first mind what is the effective cost of that particular project, th that particular proposal in which we, our company is going to invest and what are the benefits which may receive from this particular project. So, we have to actually compare the cost and benefit of a project in order to make our decision a perfect one. So, we have to estimate the cost and benefit of a proposal. I will tell you the different methods of estimating cost and benefit. There is a debate into this whether we should go for making use of accounting profit or the cash flow approach that we will discuss in due course of our lecture today. The, after estimating the cost and benefit of our proposal, we have to estimate the minimum required rate of return. My dear student, this minimum required rate of return is very crucial. Estimating or deciding or determining this minimum required rate of return is one of the most important step into the process of capital budgeting. We have to estimate what is my minimum required rate of return or it is also known as cutoff rate or it is also called as uh, the rate of discounting while computing NPV which is being used as a discounting rate. So, remember we have to decide what is my minimum required rate of return from this particular proposal in which I am going to invest and obviously it is it is supposed to be more than what I am paying as cost of capital. So, whatever is reported by the uh, reported by uh, reported to the fund manager into their decision of uh, you know financing decision when they have decided their weighted average cost of capital or aggregated cost of capital obviously their required rate of return is supposed to be more than the WACC or weighted average cost of capital. So, the second at the second step after computing the cost and benefit of a proposal, uh, they have to decide what is my minimum required rate of return from this particular proposal. And once it is decide, decided, we have to evaluate the different proposal, proposals in order to decide, in order to select the best possible option for our company. Remember my dear students, cost, cost and benefit is important for a fund manager, estimating cost and benefit is important. But along with that estimated, estimating the required rate of return is also very, very uh, crucial decision. So, you have to make a decision what is my minimum required rate of return because that will become my rate of discounting. And after uh, you know estimating my cost and benefit and minimum required rate of return, I will go for evaluating the different proposals by making use of different techniques of capital budgeting and then depending on the type of technique I am using, I will be giving a decision, I will be giving a quantified logical answer. Uh, you know in uh, with the support of uh, you know the logics that this project is the best one for the fund manager. So, this is the process of uh, you know capital budgeting decision. You know at times it is says, said that capital budgeting decision is a unique one. There are certain things certain uniqueness of capital budgeting decision which I feel that you must know that what is uniqueness of capital budgeting decision or what are the factors which makes capital budgeting decision or capital expenditure decision the unique one. Remember every capital budgeting decision is a specific decision. Suppose I am going to buy a plant for my manufacturing process. Remember it is a specific decision specific to my company. I am specific about the technical specification of my plant which I am going to buy. So, everything is clear to me. So, remember it is a specific decision which is making my decision unique one. I have to buy a plant which is going to support my manufacturing process, the kind of business I am into that particular plant will actually be my object with which I will be making my decision. So, remember my decision is very much specific, it is very much clear that this is about, about this particular plant I have to make a decision. The second one is remember every capital budgeting decision is taken in a given situation. There are certain situations which are given. There are certain uh, you know limitations while taking this particular decision. There are certain cons con constraints which are there and we have to keep in mind. So, remember every capital budgeting decision is taken in a given situation and moreover for a specific firm with the given parameters. So, it is a specific decision taken in a given situation for a specific firm. Remember, it is not a, a, a vague decision, 
everything is very much specific that i have to make this decision for my firm in which i am working it is it has to be taken in a given situation that is that is at present and it's a specific decision cause i am aware about the technical specification of my particular plant or land or building or whatever proposal is in front of me i am aware about all the specification of that particular proposal so these uh, you know factors uh, make cap makes capital budgeting decision the unique one after understanding the uniqueness of this capital budgeting decision the point comes to understand uh, the classification of capital budgeting decision at times my students are are coming with a question that sir um, they are coming to me with a question that sir in a particular numerical problem there is a term written called mutually exclusive project what is the implication of that should we ignore that or or there is some financial implication to it into our calculation at times they are saying sir there is no mention of a mutually exclusive project what to do what is the impact of it so my dear students we have to understand these terms are coming out of classification of capital budgeting decision so if these terms are clear to you in the very basic lecture in the very first lecture which i am delivering today obviously while applying those techniques you will not have any confusion or any doubt so i am just telling you the classification of capital budgeting it can, this decision can be uh, classified on two different bases one is on the basis of decision situation which we are taking and the second is on the basis of firm's existence so i'll be starting with the first basis uh, of classifying my capital budgeting decision that is on the basis of decision situation on the basis of decision situation it can be uh, classified as mutually exclusive decisions and the second one is independent decision so let me tell you about the mutually exclusive decision what is mutually exclusive decision remember when two or more alternative proposals are given we can only uh, tell them to be mutually ex exclusive when the acceptance of one alternative results into the automatic rejection of all other proposals suppose i have two proposals and these two whether whether to call them mutually exclusive or independent i need to understand when to call a particular proposal to be mutually exclusive and when and when to call them to be independent remember suppose if i am going to buy a particular piece of land i need you know uh, as per technical spe specification i need a piece of land right specification is decided and i have two options to buy that the same land so remember the moment i make a decision for buying one particular land obviously the second plot is automatically rejected which means these two projects are mutually exclusive understood so mutually exclusive decisions are 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 uh, you know those decisions where the selection of one automatically results into the rejection of others at times on a lighter note i tell my students it is just like your marriage proposal your marriage decision the moment you uh, you know you decide for to go for uh, marrying uh, marrying then you have all the options available all the proposals which are coming to you obviously you can't marry with everyone you can't marry everyone so you have to decide the moment you marry with with one proposal obviously all other options are automatically rejected so you can say that this particular decision is a mutually exclusive decision but that is on a lighter note you need to understand that when i am going to analyze the the different options for a given product then obviously selection of one automatically results into the rejection of all other options so in case of mutually exclusive decisions we have to understand that, that the selection of one alternative automatically rejects rejects the other ones so while giving a decision for this particular mutually exclusive uh, projects we have to understand that we have to select the best ones and these types of decisions occur when a firm has more than one alternative but the proposals are competitive remember the very basic trait of any uh, mutually exclusive project is that they are competitive in nature so if i'm going to buy a piece of land and i have five options all five are supposed to compete into this particular decision making process so these proposals are competitive and the moment i select the one automatically all other options which are available to me they are going to be rejected so we have to understand uh, you know suppose uh, i'm giving you an example that you have to select an advertising agency for your uh, company uh, you know to take care of your promotional campaign obviously the moment you select one company it is going to outrightly reject all other competitive proposals which is in front of you 
So once I have decided to go ahead with one advertising agency, obviously all other options which are there into fray into our decision making process, they are going to be you know rejected, outrightly rejected and this is an example of mutually exclusive project. And in this particular uh, type of decision making, what happens, what is my selection criteria? The basic rule is select the best one. So we try to give the we try to select the best one, best possible option. So when I'll be using the NPV method into my technical discussion in due course of my lectures, I'll tell you that suppose if into NPV you find uh, four proposals, all four are having positive NPV, then we have to take the highest positive NPV, the proposal which is having the highest positive NPV because we are dealing with a mutually exclusive project and our, our rule is or the guiding principle is select the best one. So, I will be selecting the best one into that particular situation. So, mind here my dear students when I will be solving, we will be solving numericals uh, you know there the term mutually ex exclusive has a role, has a very vital role into our decision making process while giving judgment we have to understand, we have to select the best one into our decision making process. Now, the second classification into this particular uh, type is accept reject decision popularly it is known as accept reject decisions but i call them independent decisions here these two decisions are not mutually exclusive selection of one is not going to outrightly reject others that is why we don't call them mutually exclusive or we can call them independent project because they are basically guided by accept reject decisions so an accept reject decision occurs when a proposal is independently accepted or rejected without any regard to any other alternative proposal and in such type of decisions propos uh, proposals are submitted the proposals which are submitted to us they are not competitive they don't compete with with each other and that is why our decision rule or the basic rule which we follow for making our decisions are select all the good ones we have to identify all the good ones all the better ones uh, which are which are better <coughs> we are not going to say that we have to select the best one because we are talking about the independent project here i would like to give you an example suppose there is a company uh, uh, you know which is into uh, you know say the fast food delivery and they have to open an outlet they have to make a decision for opening an outlet into a particular area they ha they have to identify the options which are available into a particular area this is one decision and the second decision is they have to uh, buy vehicles for the delivery boys so these two decisions are not competitive one this is the first decision is basically deciding that what will be the location of my store and the second decision is i have to buy vehicles for my delivery boys so obviously the, the decision of uh, buying vehicle is not going to affect my decision of buying or, or deciding the location of that particular outlet or store. So, these two decisions are independent, they are not competitive and when I have to make a decision for them, they can be called as independent decisions and they are classified as, they are known as accept reject decisions and here we have to select all the good ones, we have to find all the good options and out of them we can uh, decide that which option to exercise. So, this is the first uh, you know basis of classification in which we discussed about the mutually exclusive projects and the second one was independent projects. The second basis of classification is on the basis of firm's existence whether firm is into existence or it is not into existence and we have to establish a firm we have to start our new business. So, on the basis of this it can be classified uh, as decision for new firm and existing firm firm a newly incorporated firm may be required to take different decisions for example selection of a plant to be installed they may have to uh, make a decision for buying a land buying a piece of land purchase of land or it can be purchase of building or or there can be number of decisions which you, you may have to take for establishment of your business so remember on the basis of firm's existence this is the first classification when we are going to make a decision for a new firm so, we may have to make decision for purchase of different properties or plant or building or it can be anything. So, this is this is another classification on the basis of firm's existence. For existing firm when we are uh, uh, you know going to make a decision, a firm which is already into existence may also be required to take various decisions uh, like uh, the first very and, and the most popular decision is replacement decision where the firm is willing to restore the same or higher capacity. Suppose you bought a plant 
10 years back back and the plant is not you know uh, 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 is not able to fulfill your requirement or it is now running slow so in order to restore the capacity or at times you wish to increase your capacity cause you have got a greater demand in the market so you have to go for replacing your this particular existing machine so you may have to take a decision called a replacement decision in case of existing firm I'll be telling you technically how we go for making a decision of replacement in case of NPV uh, in case of NPV method I'll tell you how to go for uh, you know exercising how to go for taking a replacement decision whether replacement should be done or it should be avoided the second is uh, suppose if uh, you know uh, you feel that your plant is redundant and you wish to increase the efficiency or you wish to reduce the cost so you need to modernize your uh, this particular entire process so it can be a modernization de decision also you feel that my old plant is not uh, you know in sync with the latest developments in the market or they are not uh, matching with the with the kind of product my competitors are offering so i may have to go for modernizing my particular plants or machinery so it can be a modernize modernization decision Another decision which uh, an existing firm uh, may ask you to take is expansion or diversification decision. I told you in order to increase your profit or to maximize your profit, you may have to go for expansion or you may have to go for line extension or you may have to go for diversification. So that decision can also be taken by a fund manager or made by a fund manager and where entrepreneur may finally take a decision. And remember the last uh, you know classification into this category is contingent decisions remember contingent decisions when we uh, talk uh, the term itself is indicating that they are inevitable you have to take suppose you have modernized your plant right and your workers are trained with the old machine so obviously they need to undergo a ki some kind of training so some amount need to be allocated for you know their training and development so those expenses which you are going to incur those decisions which you are going to take for training your employees out of your modernization decision obviously is maybe known as contingent decision so into contingent decision uh, you know remember they're not independent they are coming with some decision they are actually coming because of in response to some decision which you have taken you have modernized your plant your workers are not well versed with the with the with the new plant they are working they are functioning so obviously you may have to train them so this can be another type of decision into the capital budgeting decision for an existing firm so remember my dear students on the basis of uh, you know their the type of decision you have to take that is mutually exclusive projects or independent projects or the type of firm whether you are dealing with the existing firm or new firm we may have to make our decision with quantified logical answer and it may be submitted to the entrepreneur for their final call or for their final decision but remember while giving this uh, kind of uh, recommendation into capital budgeting there are certain basic principles which we can't avoid so there is <coughs> there is a framework in which we have to go for analyzing the cost and benefit of my investment and those basic principles we have to always keep in mind whenever we are applying different techniques of capital budgeting the first very principle which is there in place as a framework for a fund manager is that a finance manager is supposed to concentrate only on the financial aspect of the proposal and you should ignore the non financial consideration remember any non financial consideration which is coming in front of me as a fund manager i'm supposed to ignore that i'm supposed to concentrate only on the financial aspects of the proposal say for example suppose if i have to buy a, i have to make a decision for purchase of a plant all all the options are coming to me i have estimated their cost and benefit and one of the employee of uh, mine is reporting that sir my relative is is dealing with the, the same kind of product why don't you place this order to us why don't you purchase it from us this is a kind of non financial consideration which is coming in front of us so we need to ignore all non financial consideration considerations and it is good also because you have to give a quantified logical answer you have to be very objective into your decision making process regardless of whether a person is my relative whether a person whether the supplier is rel relative of my employee i need to ignore all non financial consideration i have to focus on i'm supposed to focus fo focus on only financial aspect of my proposal the second is the second very basic principle into estimating cost and benefit of investment is the cost and benefit associated with the proposal are known with certainty this is a kind of assumption which we have to take 
that the cost is known to me because I am going to buy a property today and I know the price of that particular property with certainty. Along with that, I also uh, can estimate the stream of cash inflows, the stream of profits or benefits which I will be retrieving from this particular investment in years to come or across the life of that particular project. So, this is another basic principle which we have to keep in mind that cost and benefit associated with the proposal are known with certainty. My dear students, at times while dealing practically with this, such kind of proposals, we are not aware about the cert, uh, we are not aware about the benefits of a proposal with certainty. So there we apply we we include the certainty equivalence into NPV. That I'll be telling you numerically also. The way we try to make our uncertain cash flows certain. So we have some certainty equivalence which we may apply. But as far as basic principle into this particular decision making process is concerned. We make an assumption that uh, the cost and benefit of the proposal is known with certainty. Moving ahead, another uh, you know basic principle which is there with us is that we assume that capital budgeting decisions are taken with the primary motive of increasing the profit of a firm. Obviously, into all decisions of uh, a fund manager, the prime objective is to maximize the shareholder's wealth, to maximize the profit and here also we have to keep in mind that whatever decision you are going to take ultimately or eventually it need to be profitable and the last one is there is no capital rationing you need not to bother about the funding because we make an assumption that that has already been taken care by the fund manager into the financing decision they have already you know uh, uh, allocated fund for this particular decision so there is no capital rationing there is no limitation of capital for making a decision so, with these assumptions or with these basic principles in, in the back of our mind, we have to make or take our decision. Now, the question comes, what is the technical procedure of decision making into a capital budgeting decision? The first one is the estimation of cost and benefit of an investment proposal, which I will tell you how to estimate cost and benefit of a given investment proposal and what should be the basis of uh, you know, evaluating the cost and benefit, whether it, it, it should be accounting profit or it should be, uh, you know, the cash flow. Second is obviously, uh, this is what I said, accounting profit versus cash flow approach. Uh, the next one is estimation of minimum required rate of return. And after you have decided uh, these things, you have to select an appropriate or suitable technique of capital budgeting on which you'll be basing your decision. And that is something which is to be decided by the fund manager on the basis of his, his or her own discretion that which method will be applicable for, which method will actually be the best fit for the company for this particular decision or for this particular proposal. The question comes, what if I'm going to estimate the benefit via accounting profit approach? The benefit of a proposal may also be computed with the kind of profit generated uh, you know out of this particular the kind of accounting profit which is generated by this particular proposal and it may be based on that also but uh, remember accounting profit although it is a it is usually regarded as a medium to, to judge the efficiency of any firm but when it comes to uh, you know analyze or estimate the value or benefit created by a proposal we don't consider it to be uh, you know a better idea to go ahead with the accounting profit cause of certain limitations certain inadequacies which are there into the accounting profit and that is why we shift to cash flow. So, here it is my duty to tell you what are those limitations of accounting profit cause of which we are not estimating the benefits of, of our proposal via accounting profit and they are known as reasons for inadequacy of accounting profit. The first very reason which is uh, there in place and to which you will agree also that our accounting profit is affected by so many discretionary accounting policies followed by the firm. Suppose one firm is following one method of depreciation, another firm is following another method of depreciation, obviously the profitability, profitability is going to differ. The same is the case of inventory valuation. So there are number of points into financial accounting out of which we are getting our accounting profit where the accountants are following their discretionary powers and cause of that the profit from the same proposal from the same project may be different. Uh, you know into different firms depending on the decision taken by the accountant. So, this is the one the first reason which is going to affect which is which makes our accounting profit inadequate for estimating the benefit of a given proposal. The second very basic reason which is given here is that accounting profit includes many non-cash items or transactions like depreciation or at times you are having an amount of goodwill into your business your firm is making profit you may have to write it off. 
you may have uh, you might have some previous years losses and you may have to eliminate or write off those accumulated losses in the current year so cause of these non cash items or transactions our accounting profit is 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 not uh, adequate to be used as a measure for estimating the benefit of my proposal so this is the second reason the next reason which is given here is accounting profit measures the profit of a specific year it is given for a financial year one financial year however the cost and benefit of a proposal may occur across the life of that particular pro proposal so we need to understand that the proposal which is there in front of us for which we have to make a decision it has a life and across the period of uh, its life we are going to get the benefit so we have to rely on to the we have to base our decision base our estimation on the life of the project not the financial year and the next one is obviously the accrual concept which we are uh, you know following into uh, financial accounting which uh, we don't follow into the cash flow estimation so cause of this uh, you know cause of these reasons accounting profit uh, is, is not uh, you know a better idea uh to be uh, you know uh, basing our decision for basing our decision uh, you know in estimating the benefit of a proposal and that is why it is not preferred and in, instead of it the cost and benefits of a proposal are measured in terms of cash flows so here the cash flow comes as an alternative my dear students when i am saying cash flow it sounds to you as cash inflow remember it's not cash inflow i'm talking about cash flow cash flow may be of two types it may be inflow it may be outflow so cash flow is is regarded as a better alternative into our uh, into the estimation of cost and benefit of a given proposal the term cash flow is used to describe the cash movements arising out of a proposal when i'm saying cash flow it means it can be both ways it can be inflow it can be outflow and this movement is arising because of a particular proposal which you are going to take up although the exact cash effect measurement is not possible for any person but useful ap approximation can be done when we are going for uh, you know computing the cash flow or the benefit in terms of cash inflow or or cost in terms of cash outflow we are not sure that exact cash effect measurement is possible but still on the basis of accounting data a useful ap approximation can be done with the help of given information and here comes a term called relevant and irrelevant cash flows my dear students here we give a classification of two types of cash flows one which is relevant when i'm saying relevant it means i'll be while making my capital budgeting decision these cash flows will be considered by by me that is why i'm calling them relevant cash flows and there are certain cash flows which are irrelevant the term itself is indicating they are irrelevant cause i'm not going to consider them into my decision making process that is why they are irrelevant for me now i'll be starting first with the relevant cash flows what is the relevant cash flow again mind here i'm not saying cash inflow nor i'm saying cash outflow i'm saying cash flows and it may have a mix of cost and benefit so the first very relevant cash flow for our decision making process will be the cost of the project obviously that is cash outflow so the cost of the project which i'm going to take up is known with certainty as we know that in the framework of capital budgeting decision this is our assumption that cost of the project and benefit of the project is known with certainty so cost of the project project is actually my cash outflow and it is relevant cash flow so while analyzing my cost and benefit of a given proposal i'll be considering cost of project that is why it is classified under the category of relevant cash flow the second is a scrap value every proposal every project or machine has a life after the completion of life of that particular project there may be some scrap value or we also call it salvage value scrap value is what it is a value which we will be receiving from that particular plant by selling it to a junk dealer suppose i am going to auction it or i am going to sell it to a junk dealer whatever value i'll be getting that is a scrap value so this is also a relevant cash flow it is also known as terminal cash inflow which i'll be telling you in due course of my discussion the so these two were actually the first was cost the second was revenue scrap value is going to result into inflow and cost of the project is going to result into outflow the third is revenue from the project this is a benefit it is also known as routine cash inflow so whatever project i have taken it is going to give me some inflow in across the life of its uh, life of that particular project and there would be a stream of cash inflow across the life of that particular project and that is known as revenue from the project so this is also a relevant cash flow next is working capital flows there can be some additional working capital 
required for a particular proposal so if additional working capital is required obviously it would be a cash outflow it is relevant there may be uh, there may be some downfall into a working capital requirement also cause of a particular project then in that case that would be regarded as inflow although inflow is effect is not coming uh, apparently but effectively it is causing a kind of inflow so this is also my relevant cash flow so in the question if working capital is given additional working capital is given we'll consider it cost reduction in case of replacement decision it may go for reducing my cost or it may result into savings in variable cost that is also my relevant cash flow suppose i'm going for making a replacement decision so whatever cost reduction i'm going to witness cause of that particular decision that is a relevant cash flow whatever savings i'm going to create cause of this particular decision that is also going to be regarded as relevant cash flow next is tax benefit <coughs> sorry suppose if i'm go i'm creating any tax benefit or an incremental depreciation that is also regarded as relevant cash flow suppose i'm getting some tax benefit just because of taking up this proposal that is also regarded as relevant cash flow it can be vice versa also i'm getting some benefit in terms of tax that is my cash inflow i'm my proposal selection of this proposal is causing some additional cost to me that may be my cash outflow so remember this is a tentative list of relevant cash flows which includes the cost and benefit both but here we need to understand and always keep in mind what are the irrelevant cash flows irrelevant cash flows are more important than considering relevant cash flows the reason is these are the cash flows which are to be excluded into our decision making process and the first very irrelevant cash flow which comes into this category is known as sunk cost remember sunk cost the name itself is indicating that the money is already gone the decision has been taken already taken so sunk cost we don't bother about cause once the decision has been taken we can't change it so whatever amount has been spent by you on a particular by any supplier or by any uh, you know uh, company on a particular proposal then that sunk cost will be irrelevant for us for example for taking this particular decision of a proposal which is in front of us we have hired some companies we have hired some experts and they have charged certain amount as consultation fee so that consultation fee the cost of consultation fee which is which might have resulted into a kind of cash outflow will actually be irrelevant cash flow for me i will not be considering that cost cause the money has already been incurred and it has nothing to do with the selection of this particular proposal so sunk cost if it is given in the question will have to ignore it sunk cost is never considered and that is why it is known as irrelevant cash flows the second is allocated overheads my dear students as you know what is overhead the expenses which are not directly related to a particular product or a particular uh, unit of your business enterprise so they are supposed to be allocated to different units or products on certain basis that is into uh, that we, we you must have uh, studied into the Uh, you know allocation of overheads or overhead costing so allocated overheads if they are there in the question we are supposed to consider them as irrelevant cash flows we are not supposed to consider them cause regardless of my this particular decision of buying uh, a particular property or a particular asset this allocated overhead is supposed to be there once it is allocated to my business enterprise it is neutral to the to the selection of a particular project whether you select the project or you don't select the pro uh, project in both the situation in either situation your allocated overheads are to be borne by your particular unit or a particular business enterprise so we have to understand allocated overheads are not considered as relevant cash flows we consider them to be irrelevant that is why we don't account for for these particular overheads even if the question tells us that this is the quantum of allocated overheads we have to ignore them and the reason i have told you why are we ignoring allocated overheads the next one is financial cash flows or interest exclusion principle remember into this uh, cash flow estimation we follow a principle called interest exclusion principle so whatever is the cost of capital that we are supposed to ignore at times my students are asking sir why do we ignore the cost of capital when the company has to bear the reason is is very much clear cause we don't want uh, you know to charge this this cost twice once suppose suppose if i'm going to consider this interest on capital then obviously i'm charging it i'm going to charge it for two times or or you can say that there would be a double charging double impact on to my decision making process cause once i'm going to discount my cash flow 
the discounting rate is coming from where the discounting rate is actually my effective cost of capital so when i'm discounting my cash inflow the future stream of cash inflows in a way i'm providing adjustment for that particular cost of capital that is why if in the question the interest on capital or dividend on on equity share or preference dividend is given that we exclude while disc, while taking a decision of capital budgeting while considering them to be a cash flows we don't consider them this is known as interest exclusion principle so in this way my dear students i have told you i have explained to you what is the relevant and irrelevant cash flows what are the items which are included or regarded as relevant cash flows and what are the one which are regarded as uh, irrelevant cash flows Uh, so after understanding this we need to again reiterate what are the basic principles for calculation of cash flows of a capital budgeting decision remember we have to take only relevant cash flows only relevant cash flows are to be considered and i already explained it to you what are the relevant cash flows the second is cash flows are considered on after tax basis as it is said into uh, the you know the into the field of accounting and finance that all financial decisions are subservient to tax laws so remember when i'm saying that all financial financial decisions are subservient to tax laws which means we cannot go beyond that particular tax law if tax is there tax need to be considered that is why when we compute cash inflow it is profit after tax but before depreciation and non cash item so we cannot ignore that particular taxation aspect if tax is there we have to consider while computing our cash flows cash flows are cash cash flows are considered on incremental basis tax saving is considered as an inflow remember tax saving is considered as an inflow sunk cost as i told you they are irrelevant we have to ignore them opportunity cost are supposed to be considered suppose if opportunity cost is given these are to be considered and if additional working capital is given that is also supposed to be considered so in this way my dear students i have tried to give you a background of the capital budgeting decision these frameworks will actually help you in applying the techniques and tools of capital budgeting i hope you must have understood all these fundamental rules of capital budgeting decision thank you